Hi everyone, this is Eki from Boise State. Today we have uh, another podcast with James Remy, uh, who is the president of Cod Rivers. Cod Rivers is, of course, um, as you probably all know by now, one of the key companies behind uh, the development of wine. Wine is known as a, not an emulator, uh, but it does actually provide a, a translation layer to uh, make a Windows program um, run into Linux environments. And wine is um, has been progressing a lot in the past few years uh, as it's being taken as a, as a key component of the Proton, I would say, package of the ecosystem that is used by Steam uh, to run Windows games uh, on Linux and SteamOS and, and more systems. And so uh, today, one of the main topics of our conversation is going to be around the Steam Deck. Uh, you know, the new device that's been introduced by Valve uh, recently and is supposed to ship at the end of this year, 2021, and probably uh, most of the other shipments will be coming in next year, as there's a lot of pre-orders. And uh, before we move on to um, the actual conversation we had with James Remy, uh, that was actually recorded on the 21st of August. Let me just remind you that uh, we are welcoming your support. Uh, we uh, have a Patreon page as well as a Libera Pay page where you can subscribe and support what we do. Um, as you probably can imagine, uh, most of what we do take a lot of time, um, especially like those podcasts, transcripts that we'll be pu- publishing afterwards as well. So we really appreciate um, if you can consider giving what you can and uh, we'll do our best in exchange you know, to continue uh, working and providing you the exclusive information. Uh, from people we work with. All right, uh, with this uh, out of the way, uh, let's jump into um, the conversation we had about 10 days ago. Well, James, uh, it's again a pleasure to talk to you. I think we've, we've been having uh, conversations with you for several times now, maybe like five or six times, I guess. And always, uh, always great to to know your perspective uh, as a, a president of Cod Rivers and you know uh, developers of wines and, and all related projects, uh, working closely with Valve on you know on every everything uh, you know we experience with Proton and so on. So this time around, I think the, it's very clear like the big news uh, over the past few weeks has been uh, the Steam Deck has been um, unveiled by Valve. Mm-hmm. And uh, just to, to get started, like, what was your impression of the Steam Deck and um, how much did you know about the initiative before everybody else? Well, I, I don't think we knew a lot about uh, the, the specs of the device before anyone else did. Uh, Valve does a very good job of, of keeping their internal projects internal uh, and classified information classified. We had access to the same leaks that I think everybody else did that were out there on the internet, uh, a lot of speculation. Um, Because we were compartmentalized in in working on on the Steam OS and on Proton, we had an understanding of what the device might uh, might spec out as, but we had nothing definitive. Uh, We did did know that there was an announcement coming. Um, It came actually sooner than we thought it was going to. So we were we were a little surprised. Uh, we weren't expecting something to be announced until until um, more mid August, but but when it but when it came out, we were we were uh, very pleased with with uh, what we were seeing and hearing. And um, the specs of the device are incredible. I mean that's that is that is flat out a gaming computer in the palm of your hand, and it's just uh, it's it's uh, so so intriguing. That a number myself and a number of employees actually went out and purchased, uh, put in our purchase orders for for them on our own. So I, I actually went and I actually went and put my credit card, my own personal credit card, down on buying my own Steam Deck, uh, and hopefully it arrives in December. I, 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 I literally was on edge uh, it, trying to get into the order process about an hour before it actually opens. So. Uh, we were all very, we were all very, very excited. Uh, we're all, we're all gamers too, and and we think this device is is going to be, um, I, yeah, it is, it is it is revolutionary. I I I think it's it's going to be a, a revolutionary device, and it's interesting to see how this is going to manifest and how it's going to grow, and and the capabilities that it will will provide. So we're excited. We're, we're very excited, but we didn't have a lot of insight, um, advanced insight into the device prior to its announcement. Uh, however, 
maybe while you didn't have a, a direct insight about uh, the device specs and so on, uh, one thing I, I was interested to ask you is, did you know in the beginning when, when you started to work uh, with Valve on Proton that ultimately the, the, the goal of Proton and so on was to deliver a hardware device that would be uh, developed by Valve? Uh, yes and no. Uh, I, th I think when we first started, we thought the end game was going to be uh, a device that was more going to be a, a set-top device that you might have at your television set. So they might be building um, uh, a box that you would plug into your television. There, there, I mean, Orange in France did something like that. Uh, a number of companies have built streaming boxes. They had the, the big picture project that was kind of still in the works when we first started this project. So it seemed like the natural progression was is that Valve was going to build kind of like a, almost a console that you would connect to your television that was going to allow you to run uh, you know, triple A title Windows video games, uh, but we didn't realize that the, the the project was eventually going to scale more into the the Steam Deck. I mean, that was something that that we had kind of thought, well, that would make sense, especially with the success of Nintendo and the Nintendo Switch. But we didn't necessarily think that that's that's the direction that Valve was going for 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 the Steam Deck to be successful. You know, it's got to have the RAM, it's got to have the hard drive space, it's got to have a has got to have a, a high-end video card. And when we first started the project, putting all of that into a device that could literally fit in your hand was was optimistic at best. And and over the time, as technology continued to improve and, and the gaming platform continued to improve, then it became more of a reality. But when we first started, we, we thought it was going to be a console. We thought that they might do something more along those lines. And, and maybe someday they will. Uh, but but we definitely definitely like the way that um, the Steam Deck looks. We really think that that might be the the better platform, the better um, form factor for for computer gaming going forward. So a, f a few years ago, um, Valve had, had the first experiment with with let's say with a console format using the the Steam Machine initiatives, right? And mm -hmm. it didn't go very well, mostly I think because Valve was not directly involved. I mean, they they, they launched the, f the standards, but they didn't come up with, with their own machine, right? Correct. This time around, like, by what time did you know that Valve was actually going to, you know, uh, be uh, involved directly into the hardware uh, versus just, you know, uh, designing a system that anybody could use? I, I think we've known probably for a while maybe not maybe not directly but indirectly had a strong suspicion that that valve was going to take a, a greater greater role in in the the production of the hardware and i think exactly based on the experience with the steam machine and with with um making sure that they had a form factor that not only met their specs, but met the spirit of what they were trying to accomplish. And that really involves you, you having a very strong hand. I think Steve Jobs has taught everybody that if you want to build a device the way you envision that device, then you have to be the ones that's producing the hardware. And and I think other people have kind of come to the, the conclusion that, that Steve was right, that if you want to build a beautiful device, if you want to build the, the perfect device, then you can't just say these are the specs and leave it for other people to come up with. You actually have to go out there and build that device. And I think that's what Valve did is they, they, they've essentially said, this is the platform we want to build on. These are the hardware specs and then went out and actually built what looks to be an incredibly beautiful device. I mean, it, it just looks like a, a great device. I haven't had my hands on it, so I, I, I can't I can't valid I can't validate that, but I, I can tell you from everything I've seen and read, it just looks like a great device. Yeah, I think we've all been very impressed by um, I would say not just the specs, but the overall design, how well thought everything was. Uh, for you know, like for a first device from uh, you know a company like Valve, which is more well known for its like software development, right? I think it was it was pretty impressive mm -hmm. to see like they could come up with a system that's that's very. Um, you know, advanced in terms of um, overall um, concept, I would say. And um, yep. yeah, and, and, to, and, and to that point, I think I think the timing on Valve's part was was quite good because Nintendo had just made the announcement about the OLED Nintendo Switch, which which in many ways was a disappointment for a lot of Nintendo Switch users. Now, I I too own a Nintendo Switch. I've been very very happy with my Nintendo Switch, but 
things like Bluetooth and things like kind of a higher resolution and things like the ability to more easily and readily play online and the ability to to game with friends. Th those are aspects of the Switch that I would have hoped would have been improved with, with the new release and new model. And, and, and none of those came to really came to fruition. So when Valve then announces the Steam Deck, shortly after Nintendo announced the, the update to their Switch, everything a person was hoping for and wanting in that new Switch now is becoming available on the Steam Deck. And you look at it and go, wow, this is a device that has ample amounts of RAM. This is a device that has the ability to, to Bluetooth connectivity. This is a device that has the ability to be more than just a great gaming platform. This could actually be a, a, a fairly decent Linux computer and that I could use use in a variety of different ways and, and, and I'm not bound or, or having constraints. Wow, this is this is incredible. So the I thought the timing of what Valve did was 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 quite good. I, it really I think opened up a lot of people's eyes as to what's possible right after Nintendo said this is what we're willing to do. So surely I mean I've been also following myself um the market of uh, handheld uh, gaming PCs, similar to, I would say, the, um, mm -hmm. the, the Steam Deck, but, you know, earlier version of it, like, you know, the AIA, Neo, yep. those kind of things. The GPD also, the current yep. company GPD has been well known in making uh, Intel-based um, hardware as well. And definitely, I think Valve, uh, as, as the upper end in terms of overall design and, um, and you know, concept between the integration between software and hardware, which we see other companies don't have. So um, that's definitely a plus, mm -hmm. I think, for wh where they're headed. As you mentioned, the, the, the Switch, I think, was in a way demonstrating how large the market for this kind of device is and, and therefore, you know, how yep. maybe, uh, what kind of potential you could have if, if you come with the right, I would say, proposition uh, on the market uh, with uh, a PC and health gaming mm -hmm. device, yeah. Yeah, it, 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 it is really interesting because I, I do consider the Switch to be, in many ways, kind of the the uh, trailblazer, the, the forefather to all these other handheld devices that are either on the market today or, or coming to the market, including the Steam Deck. And and what and what the Switch has shown is that 80 million people around the world are, are willing to do handheld gaming. And if you look at all the blogs and all the posts that are out there regarding how the Switch is being used, you see it used, you know, on, on television sets using the Steam or the, the Switch dock. You see it being used on computers. You see it being used in cars. You see it. You see it being used in a variety of ways, which which is what Nintendo had intended. But people are taking that up. Now I think you take something like the Steam Deck, and now you have the the second iteration, version two of a handheld device that can provide that same functionality, but then provide additional features and additional games and additional connectivity, and and now you're starting to see that grow. So it's 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 important to note that that. You know, Nintendo proved that the market is there, and now it's really going out there and building devices that that span that market, but then also kind of grow the idea of what handheld gaming is. Like, the thing I find most appealing about the Steam Deck is this, a full-featured Linux computer. I can literally take that with me when I'm on the road traveling for work, use it for gaming, but I can also use it as my my Linux computer. I can plug it into my my hotel television set, I can get a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse, and I can use that for email and other things. So there's there, there's more possibilities. And, and as people continue to get these in their hands and they see what the potential is for these types of devices, that, that excitement is just going to grow. There's going to be people that are going to find new and exciting ways to use these devices that, that span probably even what, what Valve is thinking is possible. So that that that's the real excitement about this is that it's not just the Steam Deck, but it's these steps into making Linux better, making Linux more game friendly, building devices that are specific for Linux, building devices that are great for gaming, and you keep growing and building on that. You you, you it's exciting to see where we might be five years or oh, ten yeah, years it's from now. Probably going to change forever the the market of handheld devices, I would say. I would, I would agree. I, I think this is the very start of of what should be a very kind of golden age for Linux and Linux gaming is that people are actually going to see the power and the performance and, and to some ways the elegance of the Linux platform and, and, and do that in ways that that 
people would never have thought of 10 or 15 years ago from a command line and, and trying to use Linux to do very simple things to where we are today. And and it, I'm excited to see where it goes from here. Yeah. Um, coming back on you know, the mission of Code Rivers there, I think you, you're all working on, on Proton for now a long time. And um, mm -hmm. how does the Steam Deck um, alter or change your maybe short-term or mid-term goals versus what you had expected uh, in the first place? Well, I, I don't know if it necessarily changes our goals. Uh, our, our goal is to, to make Proton as robust as possible to support as many Windows games as possible. So that, that, that goal and that mission remain unchanged. What I think it does uh, largely for the, 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 the gaming community in general is it provides a targeted platform now for a variety of game developers to build towards. That the, the biggest issue and, and maybe the biggest complaint people have regarding Linux is, is twofold. One, there's no native games. There's just, there's just very few native games out there. No one's building native games. People are ignoring the Linux community. And in, in the Linux community, the, the small vocal Linux community is very, very adamant that, that they're being ignored. That's one aspect. The other aspect is, is if you're a game developer, you have no platform to build for. There is no dominant Linux distro that you would say, oh, if I built for Ubuntu 2004, or if I built for Arch Linux, or if I built for Fedora, I can capture X percentage of the Linux gaming market. It's too fragmented. Well, the Steam Deck comes out and says, okay, this is a platform. This is a build point that you can actually build towards. This is going to have X amount of devices out in the marketplace. And whether that moves the needle for, you know, total number of Linux gamers or not, we'll, we'll, we'll see how that, that, that progresses. But it gives people the opportunity to say, if you're Beth Bethesda, you can say, I can build a native Linux game to these specs and I can get it to this user base and I can, I can, get, I can get my product to market and build a native game now versus having to port things. So there's there's a lot of power in this for a lot of other game developers that have been sitting on the sidelines saying, well, it'd be interesting to have a Linux game or a Linux version of our game, but it's just not it's not it's not practical to do that. It's not cost cost advantage, uh, you know, cost it to, to do that. It, it's something that that they would want to then they, they would want to just wait and see. Now now they have the Steam Deck. Now they have specs. Now they have a hardware device that they can build towards. I, I think you're going to see more gamers take advantage of that and start putting games out there specific for this device. So I think this changes the game for a lot of other people. It doesn't necessarily change the game for us. We're still going to make Proton as good as we can make it. We're going to make it as robust as we can make it. We're going to allow it to support as many games as it's possible to support. We're going to put all of our effort and energy into that. But I think a lot more people are going to start coming beside us now and building towards these specs, building building towards this platform, building towards Linux gamers and, and giving them what they've essentially craved from day one is kind of the same respect on par with Windows gamers and Mac gamers by getting their own native native uh, native mm -hmm. games. So one thing we've seen uh, during the, the announcement of the, the Steam Deck by Valve uh, was that um they announced that the whole Steam library would be playable on this device from day one. I don't know if it's day one, but like it wasn't clear when or whether like you could play right at the time of the launch uh, all the games that you want uh, from 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 this device. And um, mm -hmm. I think one of the the big question marks for I think everybody in the, the Linux community is um, we know Proton is not there yet. Um, there's no way we, we can play like 100% mm -hmm. of all games right now with Proton or, or you know, even like native solutions yeah. or whatever. Um, and Valve seems to hint at uh, a development version of Proton that is uh, aiming at doing that, but they're not very specific in, in what they announced or what they declared. So um, is, is there anything you can tell us about, the, about this kind of aspect? Well, I, I think there was two messages that have been kind of mashed together when people focus and talk on this. The, the first message is, is when Pierre Lou um, made his announcement and stated that, that the Steam Deck can support any and all, all games, I think what he was referencing is, and, 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 I, and this, is my, this is my opinion, this is, this is my perception, this is not something I've talked to him about, but I think, I think he, was, he was trying to stake 
that the device itself, the hardware specs on this device can support any game. I don't necessarily think he was referencing supporting that game in Proton. I think he was referencing that the device has the horsepower, the video graphics, the RAM, the hard drive space to support any game out there. And I think people have kind of taken that and they've said, well, that means it, it can support the it can support the entire Steam library. Well, I, I don't necessarily think that's that's true because not every game, as you know, runs in, in Proton as of today. Now, I do think that that because Proton is a living, breathing project, it's not something that's static in any way, shape, or form, that there is a lot of effort being poured into Proton to support a broader range of games, even that's available then currently today. So I, I think you're going to see um, that when the Steam Deck is released and Proton's put on the Steam Deck, that that there is going to be a, a, a greater number of, of titles that are supported. Now, I don't have anything specific where, where it, it says that. I just know that there's a lot of different groups right now that are working on improving the many aspects that are Proton and packaging that for the Steam Deck. You know, our, our, our job, our mission is still making, as, making this as robust as possible. I think other people are tweaking it and doing things uh, to further enhance uh, the, the platform. But, it, but it's a combination of a lot of different people that are involved and, and it's all spearheaded by Valve. So uh, I would expect that when when the Steam Deck is released and, and made available uh, in December, that that it's that it's a it is likely more robust than, than people are anticipating or expecting mm -hmm. as of today. So assuming that not hundred percent of the games would work on, on day one, uh, do you think Valve has a plan to indicate the, the compatibility of the game with Proton uh, on the device, or is it going to be, you know, tried out and, you know, whether it works or not, we don't know? No, I, I, th I think because Valve is as customer-centric as they are, uh, and they are focused on, on the customers and, and the experience, that, that there'll be a, a curated uh, list of games that, that people will know they can run on, on the Steam Deck. I, I wouldn't expect Valve to, to be putting people out there where there's a lot of trial and error. That just that just has never been um, their their style. They've they've been putting you know fairly fair, fair, fairly you know customer focused, customer friendly um, solutions to the market. So I, I would I would expect that to continue. I don't expect them to change that. Now they may have, as you mentioned earlier, a developer version where you can try things that are on necessarily the, the curated list. And, and to see how well they work. But I, I think they're going to be um, very practical uh, uh, about that so that people understand these are the things that are going to work great right out of the box. And these are the things that, that will work in the future. And these are the things you can try if you want to try uh, to see where, where they are today. All right. Uh, does that mean that they, they have now like a robust, uh, I would say, Q&A team working on these kind of things? Or that's, that's kind of a separate question no they've they've always had robust qa on on proton and supporting games from day one they've they've invested a lot of time energy and resources into qa and and that's not just specific to code weavers they they actually are working with qa companies out there to to test games and and to make things better so I don't expect that to change. I would expect, if anything, that to, I wouldn't say decrease. I would expect that, if anything, to increase their effort. But but they've, they've always invested a lot of resources into the testing aspects of, of gaming. And, and, that, and to a large extent, that's why Proton has evolved as quickly as it's evolved. And that's why, and that's why games run as well as they run today, is that there is a lot of testing in the background that's taking place. Bugs are being identified, issues are being identified, and those things are being squashed through you know various rounds of development. So there's 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 a lot of work in the process, um, and and that's really what's different between, um, to a large extent, Proton and in a large extent even Crossover or Wine, is that we just can't afford the resources to do all that testing. That, that Valve is pouring into Proton today. I mean, that, that's really one of the bigger um, differentiators between the Proton and, and Linux, or crossover Linux, or, or Proton, and, and some of the other projects that are out there. All right. Um, 
Now, one of the, I would say, biggest concerns that we have uh, in the Linux community is, uh, you know, this machine is going to ship with Linux by default, SteamOS 3.0, whatever they want to call it. And uh, mm -hmm. it's going to be, uh, in a way, the endorsements of Valve uh, to, you know, as to what a Linux system, a gaming Linux system should look like and should behave, right? And one of the potential mm -hmm. concerns is like, what if, you know, maybe only 90% or 80% of games work and you have Windows gamers buying this device and realizing that, okay, I'm missing like, you know, 10 games that I really like playing with and they don't work on this mm -hmm. device. So I'm going to, you know, erase SteamOS and go back to Windows. Apparently it's possible with the device because it's completely opened. Um, yep. Is there anything Valve can do about that or uh, to mitigate uh, this kind of uh, behavior? Is there, is there anything that SteamOS will do better than Windows in any case in terms of integration or of, I would say, hardware um, support or these kind of things? Well, I, I, I think that the question really boils down to the differences between Windows and just Linux in general. So so Linux is more is a more efficient operating system than, than Windows. So your performance on the Steam Deck running Linux is, is likely going to be superior than, than the same performance of running Windows on that Steam Deck. Just, just because of the way that Linux allocates resources and utilizes RAM and, and the speed of, of the, the, the backbone of the bus, I think, you're, I think you're looking at a better experience. So that's one. Two, I, I think and I would expect that Valve is going to op optimize um, Steam OS for the for the Steam Deck. So what that means is I think you're going to get not only the best experience, but but the best utilization of resources, but the best experience. So I think uh, the graphics are going to be optimized. So you're you're going to get uh, you're going to get games that that you know I think side by side running Windows on a Steam Deck versus Linux on a Steam Deck. If you run the same game, I think you're going to see a better a better experience the, with the Linux Linux game. Than you are on the Windows, so I, I think there's 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 just inherently going to be some of that. I, I also think that um, you know there, there'll there'll always be people that'll that'll take a device like that and and, and I'll, I'll say break it with air quotes, but break it and, and install Windows on it just to show people that they can install Windows on it. But the same thing was true with the Chromebook. You can take a Chromebook, you can you know essentially wipe it. You can try to install Windows on it. You can you can try to do some of these things and and in the end, there's nothing novel about that. I mean, there's there's nothing novel in, in doing that. Now, I, I do expect, you know, there's there's going to be people out there that are going to put different, you know, they're going to break, they're going to break their, you know, again, air quotes, break their Steam Deck, put different versions of Linux on it. They're gonna they're gonna put, you know, they're gonna put different emulators on it. They're going to put, but I I think that's part of what is exciting about this type of device is that the capabilities are still unknown. So that you're you're going to have people that are going to try a lot of different things, and some of those things are going to be wildly successful. So some of those things are going to be like you know you're going to install a different version of Linux potentially on this, and it's going to run great, and you're going to be like, oh my gosh, this is awesome, or I'm going to run an emulator on it, and so oh my gosh, I can I can I can I can play my entire Nintendo Switch library, which by the way is with all the legalese that's out there right now regarding people and, and ROMs and, and stuff like that. I don't know how wise that is, but you're going to get people that are going to do a lot of things like that, and 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 they're going to. But 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 the thing is, is that right now, I think Valve's goal is to get the Steam Deck in as many hands as possible. So building that excitement, even if it isn't necessarily for Steam OS, is still still exciting. Um, I, I just think that you know, by and large, people are going to look at this device and say, "Wow, that that the experience." The way it's set up and configured out of the box is great, and I like it. And maybe I can't play every game I want to play on day one, but it's still a good enough device that I don't want to mess with it and and break it in a way that that you know maybe maybe lets me play more games, but not at the same fidelity as I have right here in my mm. hand today. All right, um, we've also heard about um, easy anti cheat so ESC support uh, being worked on. Uh, mm -hmm. by Valve and also other partners, uh, developers who were working with Valve on that. Mm -hmm. I think there was, um, um, yep. I think, um, Gary Newman, who is developer of Rust, uh, mentioning that uh, he has yep. uh, ESD working on, on the Steam Deck. Apparently, he has an earlier version of the prototype. 
um, and mm-hmm. um, is Code Rivers working uh, on uh, ESC support, or is that a totally separate efforts uh, by Valve or other partners? Well, that's, that's primarily spearheaded by Valve, but I, I believe we're building hooks uh, to to support that development, so that when it's available and ready, that that it'll work in Proton. So uh, it, there there is uh, there is a lot of effort around that. Obviously, that's that is a a, a headache uh, in regards to um, the experience and there's a lot of people that want to make that better from day one so that's that's something people are focused on so you know the the the, the message around that is is no one wants to get around uh anti-cheat that that that's not that's not the experience that anyone wants to cure you know curtail is is that we want everybody to 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 play by the rules it's it's making sure that when we in, implement anti-cheat, that we're able to do so on the Linux platform in a way that that still provides the benefit without um, the, the the bugs and headache uh, around it. So, a lot of anti-cheat is tied into uh, you know tied back in directly into Windows. So they're they're they you know it's it's you know trying to tie that into you know the Linux kernel versus versus Windows. So there's 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 work on that, but it's it's never been work that anyone was really willing or interested to do because there was no financial gain in doing that. That, 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 that part of the equation has changed dramatically. Now that now there is financial gain and okay, we're opening up, you know, anti cheat to all these steam decks. We need to do it in a way that makes sense. That still, you know, prevents people from cheating so that the experience for all the users is great. Uh, But now there's incentive to do that. Now we're talking about, you know, hundreds of thousands of devices, not just 30 devices, you know, spread out all over the world. So, and, and I think by and large too, that the gamers want that same experience. They want to be able to play on a, on a fair platform on a, on a, on a fair plane where, you know, no one's able to cheat. I mean, whether you're playing, you know, Fortnite or whether you're playing, you know, any of your favorite games, you, you, you want, you want the experience to be, to be good and to be good, it's got to be fair. So, there's, there's, I think, a lot of incentive from peop- for people to, to, um, to, to work with the game developers as they, you know, curtail that experience, uh, so that you know they're they're able to participate. So, I don't, I don't think there's any friction on any side now to, to prevent this from working. It's just, just getting, getting the uh, code to conform to the, the new environment. Well, I have two follow-up questions on ESC. Uh, first one is. Um do developers or Windows developers have to change anything to their ESC, I would say, um, integration for it to work into the Steam desks? And then the second one is um, when you mentioned like you, you want to still get the benefit of the anti-cheat technology, right? Does that mean that Proton mm-hmm. builds will have to be signed and certified uh, whenever you want to use um, them on the Steam Deck going forward to make sure that nobody is modifying anything within the Proton code? I, I believe the answer to both questions is I believe so. Uh, I, I, be, I, be, I believe I believe the, the latter question, I believe builds are going to have to be signed eventually. I, I believe that's part of what's going to have to happen in, in terms of the security pieces. And I, I think on, on the on the initial aspect is, you know, I, I think that developers are going to have to to modify, potentially modify um, the code so that it runs on the on the Steam Deck. Now, to both of those questions, I'll add the caveat. I, I think that what Valve is trying to do is make this process as painless as possible. So I, I believe they're trying to do all the heavy lifting so that the Windows developers don't have to do any lifting. So, you know, I think Valve is trying to make the anti-cheat and the OC work without developers having to change any code. I, I, I would firmly and truly believe that. So I, I think that the goal is to, to, you know, take what everyone has and, and make it work. But in terms of trying to expedite this, there may have to be some tweaks and things in order to make that work. And, and, and honestly, you know, for the game developer, there's some incentive now if you have a hundred thousand or two hundred thousand or five hundred thousand devices to build for that that's potentially a significant amount of revenue in a place where you're not getting revenue it makes sense to maybe make those steps and in, to to uh, spend some resources accordingly 
Yeah, and 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 to the latter point, I would I would suspect that um, in order to maintain support for EOC, that you're going to have to have signed builds. Now, it's 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 likely something that Valve has already put a lot of mind, effort, and energy and resources into thinking through how to make that um, as painless for the consumer as possible. So. You know, you have the developers on one side trying to make it painless for them and the consumers on the other side trying to make it painless for them. And you have Valve in the middle absorbing all that pain trying to make this work. So, you know, th there's likely going to be some compromises in order to kind of meet expectations. But I, you know, Valve historically is, has made those compromises, those diffs as small as possible so that everyone's able to participate. And, and up until now, um, and granted, we're not doing a lot of the anti-cheat now, but up until now, you know, the experience has been quite good. I mean, they've they've made this relatively painless for both developers to be on the platform and for consumers to use the platform on their Linux boxes at home. So they've 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 kind of they've 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 already shown in good faith that they're they're willing to do that, and I would expect that to continue. All right. Um, there were several things we also learned about the Steam Deck. Uh, first, that it was going to be. Uh, based on Arch Linux uh, as the base system and using KDE as a window environment. Uh, and apparently also Wayland, mm -hmm. Wayland for the, the gaming session itself. Um, are, yeah. are you aware of uh, why those decisions were made or can you provide some background? I, I think it turned out to be kind of the best targeted platform for the best experience. I, I, you know, I, I believe Valve has looked at a lot of different backbones for their platform and, and found that this was kind of the best setup and configuration. So by that, I mean it allows the most games to play and, and play well. It uh, it fits the device quite well. I mean, and Arch, Arch, Arch Linux, you know, it's, it's one of those um, bleeding edge Linux distros that's, that's always kind of pushing the boundaries but it oftentimes has the best support for graphics drivers. So it, it, it kind of makes, in, in a lot of ways, makes sense that, that you look at that and go, well, now you've got the Linux distro that, that essentially has made its, made its reputation on being the most graphics driver compatible, and, and now you're utilizing that for a gaming platform. That, that makes a lot of sense. And Wayland and, and KDE, those make a lot of sense too. So, I, I think as they went through the process and they were narrowing things down, you know, the, the obvious choices became obvious. Like th this is the right platform. This is the right backbone. This is the right integration. These are the right components. And that, and that made a lot of sense. So I, I, I don't think if you looked at those choices and you built a Linux box at home and you put those on your Linux box, that you would think that those are the wrong choices. I mean, there's there's nothing obviously wrong about about what what where they ended up and and where they're moving forward from. And you just kind of look at it and say, yeah, that that does make a lot of All sense. Right. Yeah, yeah. Also, think especially for AMD hardware, um, going for rolling release destroy is very important to ensure you have the the latest um, out of the mm -hmm. um, Mesa versions, for example. That would probably uh, ensure you, yeah. you have uh, you know. You are running the, the bugs as as you go as much as, much as possible. Uh, at the same time, would expect like on a fixed hardware uh, on the day of the release that the the kind of driver situation will probably be more or less stable by then. So um, yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'm kind of wondering um, ultimately the so what was the benefit of going for Arch on a on a configuration that's more or less like stable uh, for the next couple of years at least. Uh, but yeah, I think we'll see we'll see uh, what Arch brings there. Well, and, and the other thing too is is if the rumors about the device are true and the device is a little more modular, meaning that you can upgrade, you know, different components and pieces, ha having having the, the 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 choices that they made on the software side makes makes sense too. So, I mean, if if you're going to upgrade your graphics card uh, sometime in the future, years down the road, then you're going to want, you know. Kind of a, a a Linux distro that that is is likely going to best support that. So again, I, I don't think they were just thinking as of release date 2021, but I think they're also very future looking in terms of you know what is going to be best for the the customer one year from now, three years from now, five years from now, and and how do we incorporate that into day one? So I I think you've also picked 
open source projects and, and distros that, that make sense in that regard too. So I, I think there was a lot more thought behind that than, than maybe people even give Val for. Um, throughout the conversation, you, you've been mentioning like some kind of sales number that you expect from the, the Steam Deck, you know, like 100,000, 200,000, 500,000. Um, ultimately, and let's say, let's say within the next two years, what's your kind of bracket expectation as to how many of these, uh, you know, devices of I mean, you need of devices would be, you know, sold to the market? I I think you're probably going to see an adaptation that that is is maybe in parallel to to the Linux switch. So I, I think you're going to see a, a very strong adaptation you know day one so for example to to kind of base that conclusion you look at the fact that that valve had the pre-sale and the pre-sale sold out and now you're looking at people that are buying the devices or putting their orders in for a device they are, are being told that your lead time is the end of 2022 so I, I think whatever initial runs of these devices they've had they, they're already probably on their second or third run you figure a run is at least maybe 500,000 devices total. So you're thinking that, okay, well, maybe they've already gotten, you know, one, 1.5, 2 million devices sold uh, that are sold up front in anticipation of the release. I think once the product releases, it's going to be the must have, must have device. People are going to be clamoring for that. I think you're going to see a lot of, uh, secondhand sales where people are, you know, selling and marking these things up and, and trying to make bank. So I, uh, but I, but I anticipate that type of demand for it. And wherever you have that kind of demand, then it's, then you're really limited by your, by your capability to produce. So, so uh, I, I think as, as many devices as Valve can sell in the next two years is, is probably where that number is going to be. And, and granted that, that, that number is constrained by COVID. That number is constrained by, you know, whatever factories they're utilizing to, to build the devices, it's, it's probably constrained by, by the, the screens and, and by the hard drives. So, I mean, there's a lot of things that are probably going to kind of, I don't know, dampen that number, artificially, you know, push that down. But but I think you're going to see that that based on the price point, based on the capabilities, based on the specs, I mean, I mean, literally, we're talking a full-fledged Linux gaming machine for the price that's less than a, a switch. I mean, you're, 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 you mean, a lot of people would say just the components inside the device alone are worth more than the device itself. I mean, you know, the graphics card, the hard drives that they're using, the RAM, you look at the screen, you say to yourself, wow, that, so just base that on being just a great computer, just a great, not even a gaming device, just a great computer. There's going to be a demand for that because it's, it's already at a price point that's pretty sweet. So now you, you kind of look at that the next level and say, okay, wait a minute. Uh, now I'm getting all the gaming and I'm, I'm getting something that's optimized for this. So I, I expect that I expect that the demand is going to be very strong initially in the first two years. And then at that point in time, just like any other device, there, there is that moment where it's like, is this really a game changer? Like in the case of the Switch, it turned out to be a game changer and went from selling 10 million devices to 80 million devices. And I think that that moment will happen too for the switch or for the or the Steam Deck, where people are going, okay, am I really utilizing this? Is it really cool? Is it is it does it play the games I want to play? It, it's moved from a novelty now to is it something that really is part of of my gaming experience going forward? And if the answer to that turns out to be yes, if if Valve checks all those boxes, then I think you can definitely see the potential for this being on par with. You know, maybe not at the same level as the the switch, but definitely kind of you know being being at 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 a, at a level where you you can definitely make that comparison. Mm. Right. Do you think at some point this will also attract console gamers? I mean, I, I would say not necessarily because by default you need to be aware of Steam, you need to be using Steam so that you can actually access all of your games without having to purchase them again, for example, right? Uh, but but do you think at some point you know people will realize well you know, for this kind of, of you know value uh, that I get from this device actually I'm, I'm better off purchasing uh, this Steam Desk and you know buying my games on them from 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 the get go instead of buying a console, or do you think it's going to remain uh, more for you know PC gamer device? Yeah, that's a that's a very interesting question and and 
I think there's, I, I think you can probably answer that in two ways. One, I think at the price point that the the Switch Deck is at, and and the ability to the well, the dock, which has been discussed but has never been been elaborated on or released or priced, if at that price point you're you're essentially a little less expensive than an Xbox or a PlayStation, so you, you may get the console the console player that's looking at it going well for a little less money i get something i can actually put in my back pocket and carry carry with me wherever i go it's a little easier to transport um than my my xbox for example so you you may get those those end users i don't think this is the type of device that a, that a hardcore console gamer is going to look at and go, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to give up my entire library of Xbox or PlayStation games to, to have a, 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 uh, a, 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 you know, a, a steam deck, but you know, it's interesting. Um, so I, I don't think you're going to ever change that core group. Just, just like if you had a, a you know, a, a, you know, a Nintendo, Nintendo Switch doesn't change the hardcore PC gamer. Like, they may find it interesting, and they may purchase one to kind of play things on the side, to, you know, the portability. But you know, at the same point in time, uh, I still, uh, I, I, I still, you know, play. You know, I would say 80 percent, 90 percent of my gaming experience is PC. That's just kind of where I've lived. So that's that's what I'm, I, what I, what I enjoy. So. I, I don't think you're going to change those hardcore users, but I think the people in the middle are going to kind of take a look at it and say, you know what? Um, yeah, this is interesting. And, and, and they may actually start making changes and, and people that haven't invested in Xbox or PlayStation, the consoles, I think they're going to look at this and go, you know what? Um, this is, this is interesting. This is, this is something I, I, I would like. And I think if that steam, the, the dock for the steam deck becomes um, kind of a must have device, then, then I think you've, you've essentially got something that people can at least compare to a console. So if you're in the ballpark and you're less expensive, you're going to get some of the market. You're, you're not going to get the lion's share, but you're going to get some of the right. market. Um, what do you think of, of uh, Microsoft and Sony there? I mean, like, um, the, the Switch has been around for a relatively long time now. Um, Sony used mm -hmm. to be, uh, you know, a big player in the, the console, portable console market with the PSP uh, now a long time ago. Um, and mm -hmm. Microsoft has all the PC knowledge of the world to actually make this kind of device as well. Well, why do you think neither Sony nor Microsoft, uh, you know, jumped in this kind of markets following the success of the Switch? Well, I, I don't. I, I don't know if their experience necessarily lends itself very well to that type of that type of form. I mean, people are used to sitting on their couch and having their 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 gaming controller in their hand and playing on a big screen TV set. I, I don't necessarily know if their market has has shifted to the point where you know playing on a seven inch screen is is appealing. So I, I, I think they're probably reading the market correctly. I think where um, I think where a lot of a lot of these these technology companies are missing out is is that there's a whole generation of gamers now that are used to playing on their phones, and are used to playing on tablets, and those those gamers are looking at a switch saying, well, this makes sense because it's what I'm used to playing, but now I've also got a controller built into it. This is perfect. And I think those types of people are going to also look at at the Steam Deck and say, "Oh, this is perfect. This is a perfect device for what I'm used to." I, th I think you know, you know, I turn 50 next week. Um, you know, people people like me, you know, that are kind of set in our ways. I'm I'm always going to go to a keyboard and a mouse and play on my PC. That's always going to be my first go to. But now when I'm traveling, I'll have a Steam Deck with me and I'll be using that. Um, when I want to play some casual games, I'll, I'll probably turn on my my Nintendo Switch and play that. Um, you know, unfortunately, I don't have as much time for gaming as I'd like, uh, so I, I don't get to, to. I don't have an endless supply of that. But but I, I, th I think you know I'll find you know use cases for all three. But but gr going forward, I, I think you know if you're talking to gamers that are between the ages of eight and fourteen, you know th this this. 
Steam Deck makes just a lot of sense to them. And and I don't necessarily know that's where I don't necessarily know that's where Xbox and PlayStation's market is. I think Xbox and PlayStation markets even older. PC gamers are even older than that. So you know, I I, I think you know they they probably read their market correctly that it's just not a good fit for them. Now, I will say this because there is always that me too kind of um, enthusiasm about the market. If, if Valve knocks it out of the park with the Steam Deck, I would fully expect Microsoft's next Xbox to have a handheld component to it. And I would say the same thing for the PlayStation. And, you know, to some extent, you can say the PlayStation tried. You know, Sony tried the handheld device with the PS, PSP and, and uh, the, the Vita. And, um, and because of how closed off they are, and how difficult they make it uh, for and for customers, um, I, I I'm not surprised that they have failed. I mean, I, I do own a PSP. I have a PSP, uh, in, in you know, I, I, that was my original handheld gaming platform way back when, and I burned through two of them. Um, but you know, when you try to put something on a new device and nothing's compatible from generation to generation, and it, it, again, you got to make you got to make things easy for the customer, and that's that's just where Valve and, and to some extent Nintendo have just just hit it out of the park. They just make it easy. You know, that's not necessarily how Microsoft does things. That's definitely not how Sony does things. So that that would definitely be a change in, in their culture to to build a device that that provided the the flexibility and usability that that someone like Valve can. But but my guess is that they've 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 considered this, but they read their market and say it's just not it's just not the right fit for them. Right. Yeah, but I would expect, that, as you mentioned, like you know, if if Valve makes it big with the Steam Deck, yeah, that they would definitely look at it again, probably. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, it, I, a lot of people think, you know, that what what Nintendo did was a fluke. Like they th- they thought that was kind of you know very flukish. Like it's a lot of casual gamers, and and I gotta be honest, I, you know, for for some of the games, yeah, it's not it's not a great fit. Like it's not a great experience to play Fortnite on a Switch. But for a lot of other games, they, they've done a very good job of optimizing the games for their hardware platform. So a lot of the Switch Switch specific games are are quite good, and and that's really what people wanted was a good experience. Now, you know whether you can say that the funky colors and the screen size and the fact that it doesn't have all the features and functionality aside, that they, they built a great experience. I think if Valve goes out and tries to build the same type of experience, I think they're going to show that you know it's not a fluke. This isn't this isn't a one-off. This is this is something that that really is um, part of where we are as a culture, as a people in the gaming community today. And again, we're having a whole generation of gamers that are playing on their phones and are playing on tablets and are playing on other other small handheld devices that haven't had necessarily great controllers and haven't had a great library of games. I think you give this device to them and they knock it out of the park. They they not only find ways to play games the way they want to play and they have a great experience, but they're also looking for new, pushing the envelope and doing new and unique things with these devices. You're you're going to see that growth. You're going to see that that this isn't a one-off. That this is really kind of a, a good fit for not only gaming today, but but gaming five years, ten years down the so road. It's a great transition because my next question was that um, I think Valve is envisioning the deck not as a you know single device that they are the the only one uh developing or releasing but as a platform right uh so in a way it's, it's kind of a rebirth of the steam machines idea where actually any manufacturer can go out there make their own steam deck like device and they could reuse steam os uh they could reuse whatever valve has built uh around it to make it work as well on their device, and it would be kind of a you know Android-like uh, model where uh, the OS uh, and the hardware, as long as it's compatible, is ready for you to use, and and it's up to you to build the greatest platform for for everyone. So, what do you think of that? I I think I think that's 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 largely correct. I I think that they're making this. Um, I think they're making this foray into hardware to prove that it can be done and be successful much the way that that Google you know introduced very high-end 
Chromebooks to show people that, yeah, there's there's a market for this. You build a device that's got a, a dedicated graphics card, people are going to buy it. Um, don't be afraid of the $1,200 price point when Chromebooks are selling for $200 because there's a market for it. And, and, and what you've seen now in the years since is that there are more and more high-end Chromebooks that are coming to the market. And, and the generation now will have dedicated graphics cards, kind of what Google's always envisioned, bigger hard drives, something that they've never, you know, never yet perceived as being necessary four or five years ago, but, but now are, are becoming, you know, part of the experience, more dedicated RAM. Again, they're, they're building better devices. I, I think in a large way, what Valve is trying to do is 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 much the same in that we're going to show you that if you build a really good hardware device, a good a good device specific for SteamOS, that it's going to do really well, that it's going to launch well, that it's going to sell well, that people are going to enjoy the experience. I think what it also does is it sets a bar that if anyone else wants to come into this market, you're going to have to be at least as good as the Steam Deck, if not better. You're going to have to you're going to if you're going to reinvent the 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 platform then you're going to have to grow that by putting out a device that that ups the ante a bit that isn't just status quo that is better than um, if you want to gain gain market share and in at the end of the day if if valve sells you know games on steam deck or valve sells games on a competitor steam deck they're still selling games they're still i mean they're they're not losing um, they're not losing in that process. It's it's still a very profitable process for them. So I but but I think what they're going to do is they're going to set the bar and they're going to show people how it needs to be done. They're, then then you'll see competitors that are going to want to get in there and there'll be there'll be a number of them. But they're going to have to have great integrated controllers. They're going to have to have great RAM. They're going to have to have great video cards. They're going to have to have great battery life. They're they're going to have to have um, some of those specific features and functionality that people crave as opposed to putting out something that is the lowest cost denominator that 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 you know barely checks these boxes or checks half the boxes people aren't gonna, people aren't going to tolerate that and and I think that's the best part about about the steam deck is that it, it's gonna it's gonna create an entirely I think new device market um that 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 people will be like, just just much the same way that you know 15 years ago gaming gaming laptops became a thing i think you're going to see that this handheld gaming device is going to be a thing like it's 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 something that other people are going to build for and uh so that but but i think the valve's doing that correctly too i i think by setting the tone and setting the bar that what they're doing is they're getting people excited and they're and they're showing people how it needs to be done right um, one last, probably last question, because I think we're kind of running out of time. Um, you, you were talking briefly about Chrome OS mm-hmm. earlier, and um, we've been following mm-hmm. that also situation very closely in the past few months, and it looks like more and more uh, Google is preparing for uh, an official, um, I would say, Steam uh, integration into Chrome OS in, in the very near future. Mm-hmm. Um, is that something that Code Weavers is helping with, or is that something completely outside of your scope? That is completely outside of our scope. We we again are, are focused on on the proton pieces and making proton again as robust as possible. And and the interesting thing is, and, and a credit to Mr. Andrew Eichem, who has been been spearheading the efforts on our end. Um, it's robust enough that it is device agnostic. Like you can put you can put proton on just about any device, and you can get results. So. Putting, you know, Steam on a Google Chromebook is not outside the realm of possibility. It's 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 something we we did kind of day one on the Linux partition. We were able to do that. Now now it's become better and better and better and better. And I I imagine and envision that that it's going to continue to improve uh, because Google is now working towards again. You have a you have a platform and a target. Uh, you can you can build towards it. You can make the experience as rich as you want to make it, and I think that's kind of what Google is, has been planning. But it it all comes from the fact that that Proton isn't limited in in any or constrained in any way that makes it makes that that change difficult. So, the fact that Valve wants to put you know Proton on Chromebooks is great. I I own a Chromebook that would gladly accept <laughs> putting you know a handful of my 
handful of my Steam games on that I can play, you know, when I go and get great battery life and, and, and great, have a great experience. So I'm looking forward to that personally. But it, it's, it's a testament to how, how good Proton is, that it's portable in a way that, that allows a lot of devices to participate and play. And, and if you think about the limited specs of a Chromebook, the fact that people are even considering this just tells you, you know, how good that platform is getting and how good Proton is, is to be able to run on that. And I think once you see it run, you'll be like, oh yeah, I get it. it this is this is good. This is this is better than I expected. Maybe not perfect and maybe not brilliant, but it's it's very functional. And and for for people that have been running Chromebooks for years and years, they'll tell you flat out that there's not a lot of functional gaming in Chromebooks. Um, so they they'd be very they'd be very welcome to the opportunity to have um, have actually a, a, a gaming library that's that's better much better than average, uh, especially in the wake of uh, you know how how uh, Stadia uh, underperformed. Uh, th this is this is probably a, a very welcome um, a welcome uh, mm -hmm. announcement from from Google. All right. Um, thank you very much, James, again, for your availability. Maybe one last question uh, regarding uh, Code River. I just seen yesterday on Twitter, uh, you guys are apparently recruiting new people. Do you want to say something about that quickly? I would. I would love to say something about that. And thank you for that opportunity. We are, we are looking for developers. If you have um, good C uh, developer skills and you're looking for a, a home, we would love to talk to you. Uh, we have a lot of different projects out there right now. If you're familiar at all with Wine and, and Wine HQ, if you're familiar with Proton and you've always said to yourself, I would love to develop on that platform, I would love to work with a lot of, a lot of uh, really, really great developers that are rock stars in their own right and have that opportunity, we would love to talk to you. No matter where you're located in the world, whether it's in the United States, Japan, uh, throughout Asia, Europe, South America, uh, Australia, we, we have developers on six continents right now, and um, we're able to incorporate their skills and, and their contributions into Wine and into Proton, and they're doing great, and we would love to add more people. So if, if that is something you've always said to yourself, I, I wonder if um, this is there's an opportunity out there for someone like me, give us a call. We would, we would love to talk to you. You can go out to... Uh, codeweavers.com's jobs and you'll see our job posting uh, you'll find us on hacker news uh, we have a job posting out there as well and you can read up more about our company great i hope you find some some great candidates to help you with your projects well thank you very much for that opportunity i i uh, I, I was amiss to not bring it up and, and i'm sure our marketing person is much happier now that i did we just uh, we're in the process of making another major announcement to hire more developers we're looking to hire three or four developers here in the next couple months. So, again, if 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 your listeners have uh, have C skills and feel like they'd be a good fit and enjoy uh, enjoy that type of development work, uh, are familiar with Wine, familiar with Proton, please um, reach out to us. We'd love to talk. We'll do. We'll, we'll pass the message and uh, and hopefully uh, this will be spread on different channels as well. So uh, somebody will be able to see it at some point. That's great. All right. Thanks Thank again, you. James. Uh, always a pleasure talking to you. And uh, I guess we'll be in touch. And whenever something interesting comes around again, we, we'll be uh, happy to talk to you again. I appreciate that. And, and when we get to the end of the year, we're going to have to talk about those uh, forecasts for 2021, the predictions, because I, I think I'm knocking my <laughs> predictions out of the park. I don't know how the other guys are doing, but I think three of the five things I've, I've suggested that were going to happen have happened. So I, I feel pretty confident that that uh, I've I'm 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 winning I'm winning that uh, that uh, event that you had at the beginning of the year or the end of last year. So I'm I'm excited to see how that sure, ends we'll up. Really, we have to to look at everything again and and uh, score who won and see and see how far uh, we we've been uh, with all those predictions. But I think yeah, definitely most of your predictions I think are either true or becoming true. So I think you'll be definitely in the top. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thanks again. Have a great day and, uh, and a great weekend as well.